Hi, in the last video we covered installing the MySQL server. In this video we'll be covering creating, backing up and restoring a database, and basic user account management. So, uh, first thing, step to do is make sure the server is running. So go to command prompt, and type MySQL D. Okay, good. So we'll close that window and open a new one. Okay, now I've created a backup file of a database that I'm working on for managing a vehicle storage facility. So go ahead and navigate to that folder. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to open the MySQL client. First step is to create an empty database to restore that backup into. So we type create base, and then the name of the database we want to create. This RV storage manager underscore n. Not double n, just single n. Okay. We can verify that's been created with show databases. And she is in there. Okay. Okay, now we're going to exit the client. Okay, that there's a single file in this folder, the extent, uh, SQL extension. That is the backup file of the data database. I created this backup using MySQL's backup utility called MySQL dump. We're now going to restore that uh, backup do that by invoking the MySQL client as the root user or any user with create privileges. So basically administrator privileges. Root password. Oh. Okay, then the name of the database we just created. less than sign and then the name of the backup file. Taking a moment which is good. Okay, now let's go ahead and recon open up the client again. And this time, I'm also going to type the name of that database because this tells the client to open, you know, connected to that specific database. So, okay, now let's verify that there's data in that database. Show tables, and there sure are. Okay, and let's verify that there's data in the database. Okay, select statement, and that's the uppercase. Okay, don't worry about this formatting of the screen. This is going to look ugly. We're just verifying there's, there's data in there. Don't care about what it looks at this point. And there it is. So we have data in here. Okay. And we're going to. Actually, no, because we can do the next step from here as well. Okay, next step is we're going to create a couple of user accounts. Um, we don't would not want every user in a multi user database to have, or probably wouldn't want every user on database to have uh, essentially root privileges. Um, you would uh, grant specific permissions for them to do the work they need to do. So let's go ahead and create a couple of uh, users here. And give them different levels of permissions. So I'm just going to type it in and then I'll go over the structure of the statement. Oops.
Okay, we use the create user command, which does exactly what it says to do. It creates a user account. Okay, the first part has a username. We went with DB developer. Okay, an ampersand signed, and then the name of the host you want this uh, user to be able to connect from. Um, you can, it can be a specific IP address. It, you can use the wildcard, which strangely enough is not an asterisk. It is in just about everything else. But for this, it is a percentile sign. This is say, allow this user to connect, connect from any uh, host. I'm just going to give local permissions here because this is a development system. That's all he needs to be able to do. Assuming he doesn't even really exist other than me. Okay, we create another user. Just creating a user account for a person named Bill. Okay. Now, as it stands, these two users can't really do anything because uh, they have no they have no permission to do anything yet. You have to grant them permissions, which you do. Like so, and it's on a user per user basis. So. Vickages, Vatches. Okay, what we just did here, we'll go over the statement, grant all privileges, privileges on the name of the database, RV storage manager, underscore n in this case, dot wildcard. Okay, what the symbol the asterisk. What that what that's saying to do is let this user do everything on this specific database, all tables, that's what that, that asterisk is that you could specify the name of a table if you want to do on a table by table basis to user DV developer at localhost identified by and then his password. It's done. So we're, we're hypothetically here we're going to say this user DV developer is the programmer. He needs access to everything on this database and that that's what we just gave him. You can do anything on this database. Not the server, you can't work with other databases on the server, but this particular database he can do anything he he'd like to do. Okay, let's go on to user Bill. Let's say he's a normal employee. Uh, he needs um, he needs to be able to update, read records of cor course, and add you know update another. Bleh, let's try that again. He needs to be able to edit records, create new records, and read records. Obviously, uh, he does not be, need to be able to create tables, create databases. Obviously, definitely not delete tables. So he just he basically just needs record access. So So here it's grant, give, give permission to, select, that's read, update, which is edit a record, insert, create, which is create new records on 
the database RV Storage Manager dash n dot asterisk. In other words, all tables on this database to user bill from the local host, um, then identified by his password. So, enter. Okay. Now there's one more step you have to do. Type command is flush privileges. See what that does is that forces the database to reload the users table and update their permissions. So let's go ahead and exit the server. We're not gonna we're not gonna go through and verifying the users can write and everything through the database on this video. We're just gonna at least verify they can connect. Okay, so let's first let's try connecting uh, as DB developer. Wow, well, can't type today. <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay, let's make sure he can at least read. The, read the tables. So let's go. Again, don't worry much about the formatting, just looking. Okay, that user at least has read access. Exit, client again, Oops, clean up the screen. And let's verify that Bill can connect. he can and same thing make sure he can read from the database there you go okay so this database is up and running with a couple extra user accounts now look at that Clear the screen. Der, der. Yeah, I'm going to delete that backup file I made. I have it. The backup itself is backed up elsewhere, so I'm not too worried about it. I want to show you how to use the backup utility to backup your database. It's gone. Okay, good. Now, okay, let's use the. Uh, we're going to use the my uh, the uh, MySQL uh, backup utility, MySQL dump, to create a full backup of this uh, database. And MySQL dump user root. Okay, go over the structure of the command of the bit here. It's MySQL dump user. Pretty sure you have to be root to do this. So it prompts the password. What host is the uh, database located on? It's the local machine. Name of the database you want to back up. Then a greater than sign. Easy way to wait. Way to think of this is name of the database, then point two, and then enter a name for the backup file you want it to create. So let's go ahead, press enter, prompting for my root password. And connect. 
three. Okay, and let's open up a text editor. I want to show you. The, I'd like to show you the file. Let's go. Notepad's just going to give you an unreadable mess. I think Notepad Plus will give you something we can re actually kind of read. Oh yeah. No, not right now. There we go, and all the all the fi the files this back particularly creates are basically just text files, and it create it uh, contains a series of SQL statements, basically telling how uh, MySQL to create the database and populate it with the with data, and then to restore this database or transfer to another server, you would just use the MySQL client uh, like I already showed you. And close that. We do a little clean up here. Let's go ahead and close out the server. Done. And that concludes this video. Thank you for watching.